Hi, hello, this is Jules the Human here, and welcome to the Jules and Matt Anime Hour. I'm one of your hosts, Jules the Human, and every week we go out into the world and watch a little bit of anime. And today we came back and we're going to talk about the anime Overlord for the very first time. We're going to be talking about episode one through four of the anime Overlord. And I'm not going on this journey through Yggdrasil alone. I'm here with my co-host, Matt Galley. Matt, how was your week? We got to play some games yesterday. It was pretty fun. Yeah, uh, week's been good. Been playing, yeah, a lot of board games. We played, what did we play yesterday? Seven Wonders. Mm -hmm. Seven Wonders was a lot of fun. Um, I want to play House on Haunted Hill. The Mm -hmm. Haunted House on Haunted Hill and Haunted Village. (laughs) The hill with the haunted house. The trail at Haunted House on the Haunted Hill. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that one. Um, That one seems fun. But yeah, um, fun week. Uh, Been enjoying this show. Um, This show is nice. Another, uh, it's not as uh, bombastic as Cabinary was, but Mm -hmm. it's uh, very enjoyable in a lot of its own ways. It's, It's very different, right? Like, I. Didn't take as much notes as this one as Cabinary, but I was still vibing with it. And it it felt a little like less dense, but in a it was fine. Like I was okay yeah. with it. Cause we go through so many different anime on this show. We've been through so many different anime. As you could see here on our list where we've uh rated all of the anime we've already watched on this show. But they they all have their own thing, and it's so cool to go through so many different genres of anime, but it's still called anime. It's still the one overarching genre, but there's so many different ways to tell a story, different stories to tell, or different ways to get through uh, to the same conclusion. So it's been pretty cool that this one's different, but it doesn't mean it's worse or it doesn't mean mm-hmm. it's better yet because we're just in the first four episodes. But <clears throat> it's so cool to dive into this. And we told we talked about this before we started the show that watching this anime uh, made us want to play Final Fantasy XIV again because this is this is the one. It's so cool. <clears throat> it's it's this show does a lot for MMORPG like gamers, just kind of like a inherently where it just does certain things where it's just like yeah that's that's just how that that is and it, yeah the show doesn't really need to explain it more <clears throat> sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't and it also kind of lends itself towards a uh, a viewer that is familiar with isekai yes well, because it does a lot of stuff with isekai that it doesn't really spend a lot of time on but he just kind of quickly you know, the main character quickly has these uh, throwaway lines that are meant to remind you that this is also an isekai, not just like an MMORPG anime, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Not just a generic fantasy, it's also an isekai. He's he's in this new world, so to speak. Yeah. And we're going to dive into it, Over Overlord, I almost said Overwatch, Overlord, episode one through four, every week. If this is your first time watching, every week we go through a couple episodes and then we rate the anime. Last week we rated Cabinary of the Iron Fortress. Uh, both S tiers here from last week. And then now we start a new journey into Overlord. <clears throat> so we're going to dive into it. Episode one, Overlord, end and beginning. This is an interesting one because, um, I don't know. I have some things to say about yeah. this as a opening episode. So give us a brief breakdown of what happens in episode one. Um Episode one and and beginning the year is 2126 and virtual reality has reached a point of being able to dive into the experiences a D M M O R P G, which stands for dive MMORPG by the name Idrisil peaks above its contemporaries due to its expansive map and incredibly high amount of player freedom. 12, excuse me, 12 years post release and the games servers are set to close. Uh, Momonga, the leader of a guild by the name Ainz Ul Gaon, co- uh, contemplates how far his guild has fallen from its peak, with the halls of the Tomb of Nazarick uh, empty, save the NPC guardians. <clears throat> Momonga patiently awaits the servers to close. However, the clock strikes midnight, and he doesn't get signed out. In fact, his entire player console and heads-up display has disappeared, uh, leaving him unable to contact administrators or GMs. Um, he tries to figure out what's going on. The NPCs of the tomb have now animated with their own set personalities, and they all act in a way that uh, demonstrates their loyalty to Mamanga. 
uh, tasking Sebus to do recon and Albedo to gather the Guardians. Momonga also goes on to test his capabilities, test the capabilities of his power on another floor. Um, noting that he can feel all of his old power, even though <clears throat> readouts and displays are gone, it is clear he's not a force to be reckoned with. Albedo would arrive shortly after with several more floor guardians, all of them offering their complete loyalty to Momonga. Thank you, Bubsy, for the 32 months. I'm sorry the little thingy didn't go, but I think you saw my lights flash. But thank you for the 32 months. I appreciate it, Bubsy. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Bubsy. Appreciate it. Hello, Bubsy. So uh, can we talk about the OP? P, the opening so of good. this it's I loved so it. good yeah i love it so much better than common area the iron fortress is so much better not as an anime but like as an opening i was yeah. like here we are i'm hyped the song is dope um it gives you some some action sequences classic you know anime opening but the song takes it over the top for me mm -hmm. i was super hyped for this <clears throat> um we meet a lot of characters and like okay before we like dive into the whole thing but as a first episode because we go through these a lot right we go through a lot of first episodes we've been through this is episode 36 of the podcast we've been through a lot of first episodes i think this first episode was kind of mid but it oh, was yeah. good enough and good for people that aren't familiar with the style i guess to get into it yeah um if you're not familiar with these guys if you're not familiar with mmo stuff like they didn't explain a lot of the heads up display that he had, but it was like, okay, it's a video game. So it's whatever. But like, if you're not familiar totally with all the different tropes and things like that, it was good, but it was a little slow because I'm already, I'm already familiar with all that stuff. Yeah. And I was like, just, okay, yeah, I just it. to, just to draw, you know, uh, one of the easiest parallels comparing it to, um, the sword art online, episode one <laughs> uh -huh. they they really take a lot of time to flesh all of it out like this is what's going on this is how this character's in this situation the show doesn't do any of that the show kind of just with uh again I, I don't this is not a 12 episode anime this one's 13 i think 13. from the first season but um yeah with these shorter seasons of a uh, certain anime they got to get you into what they're trying to do right away i feel I think like this we're... first episode is a good like it's just a good way of getting the audience there mm -hmm. even though it's not doing anything crazy i feel even it just checks after all the boxes, watching you know? sure sure even after watching there's just the first four episodes i feel like we're never going to see him in the real world no i think that i think yeah. we're just that's totally gone now we're here that's now not what the audience cares about that's not what the yeah. audience is here for so they're not going to spend time wasted on stuff that the audience is not here to see i did care about it a little bit in sword art online though because of the whole nerve thing nerve attached to people's heads and their people are dying in the real life. Yeah. Like I was, he hasn't explained so far. We haven't seen other people mm -hmm. so far. We, as the audience know, he's the only one. Mm -hmm. So we don't even know the, the possibility of people dying in the real world or whatever. Like what's happened to his body. I don't know. Let's keep going. Let's figure it out. He's been here. It's for not days. what the story cares about. <laughs> sure. And that's okay. But like yeah. I'm saying in Sword Art Online, I yes. cared about it because that's the way they set it up in the beginning. They yes. set up this thing's the nerve gear. This is whatever. And this is happening in real life. We meet our main character, who is the overlord, Momonga. Um, I didn't even notice it at first in this first episode, but I liked how he would switch his voice. Oh yeah, he yeah. Would talk to his people, and then whenever he is gives his inner dialogue, it was different. It was that's just like that's the normal. closest to him as a person, I think, <clears throat> that we're gonna <laughs> get probably. Okay, is hearing his real voice, but then the voice that he's talking at is you know his like chosen voice modulation or whatever settings. <laughs> yeah, um, I like the idea that they present that he's the last one, that he's yeah. the last one of his guild. Like, that's a cool thing because like us gamers know, like this happens, games die, things happen. And if we were to see like World of Warcraft closed down, well, I don't think they're ever gonna do that. But if you see World of Warcraft closed down on the last day, there's gonna be people that stay there. to like, I spent all this time, he said 12 yeah. years, mm -hmm. he built this guild, he had the most powerful weapon, he had, his clan his his group of friends or whatever and they're gone <laughs> and, and he's the last one 
and that's the and that's kind of the the that kind of becomes the crux of his i guess uh character is yeah. this whole contemplation of like i've spent all this time doing this but in the real world like and it feels oh, like well. i feel like this has given me a sense of doing something it's kind of like what he's getting at but in the in the real world um real world. he's just he's just like i i'm i work to go home to go to back to work the next day yeah and it's yeah. like this at least here i feel like i'm a part of something and i'm making a difference even if it's not in some like physical real world way quote unquote and that <clears throat> that instantly makes him um relate to me to gamers to people that are into that or have something to you know take their mind away from it from their world their life or whatever and and he gives them a purpose sort of and now this guy has purpose because of this game that he's been playing for 12 years and then now he's in it so like now i have i know like a couple of things just from that i know a couple of things about mamanga is that he knows this game really well he knows a lot of stuff about this game and knows a lot so now later on i can believe he does something like he i can believe that he you know has I can this believe... magic item or whatever <laughs> he's got the max inventory size yeah. and this dude's just got consumables and usables and all the things that because, he just pulls yeah. out of his little void area oh i have this picture of endlessly pouring water here you go he must be yeah. thirsty like sure yeah he has so, that that's probably see, like a level three item he's level 100 just by doing that it, it sets it up so much for later because now you're already giving the tools that he's been playing this for so long um <laughs> dude's got cheats tell the devs <laughs> yeah but like e me even playing for 200 hours in final fantasy 14 i'm like oh i have these little items here you go mm -hmm. here matt whatever here's this yep. whatever and it's like totally believable because i've been there you know what i mean and we know that about him, but now we also know that he has a purpose um, because he feels alone. He he thinks he's stuck. He doesn't know if there's anybody else. He wants to find his friends. And now he's um, in charge of all his servants and the guild. And <laughs> uh, we didn't mention this part. but with one of them, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, with the, the whole Albedo thing. Them putting that in the first episode about him uh changing the text which is kind of funny in yeah you know it's it's funny when it's just guy. like a, a person an NP npc standing there that doesn't move sure. <laughs> but uh, it's... the they they took it kind of far for a first episode i yes. I, I know in first episodes they want to get you hooked or whatever like in um like in live action series sometimes they put their nudity in the first episode so people can get hooked on that and they're like oh i want to see the whole show i know that's a that's a thing that they do and they did this in this one where it's like overly sexual with Albedo. Do I think it's going to go any further? No. But I was like, hmm. Yeah, she was just, like, are it, you going to take me right here for the first time? I'm like, uh, come on, man. Yeah. It puts a bad taste in your mouth. And it reminds yeah. you that she, I, I haven't, I, I honestly don't know. But it reminds you that she's probably written by a guy. So, yes. It's just that. Um, yeah. So, as for, for first episode, uh, before watching this, before sitting down to watch this for the podcast, I had watched this series before, not like start to finish, but I've seen the uh, like my Crunchyroll account had the first episode as watched and then like nothing else after. Okay. And I'm watching it through again for the first time. And there are certain things that are happening where it's just like, I don't know where the show lost my attention, but I can tell that like, oh, the first episode <laughs> the just lost part. me at some point. The first episode lost me at some point because when it got to the part with the uh with like the other guardians on the sixth floor coming back and stuff i thought i remember thinking that oh look his guild mates are coming back that's cool like he's not alone anymore so i just completely missed the whole part about the npc is coming back to life i guess mm -hmm. and i think that's where the show lost me um, gotcha because I we do have, meet i must have looked away and then this, that's when the <laughs> clock struck 12 and then i looked back and i'm just still not realizing you know you look away for a second and you could miss a lot you miss you miss a lot yeah <clears throat> um we do meet a lot of his uh what are they called floor guardians floor, floor guardians. guardians yes abedo or amare demiurge uh coxitus shaltier blood fallen and then his servant sevis this is a cool crew 
we, I, we get I a like lot. that they're all distinct. They are visually. super distinct. Um, in this next, in episode two, we get a lot more of them. But like, mm-hmm. as a as them showing them, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, this is a cool crew of of people and characters I want to explore. And um, I love the whole concept of he ran this guild where they were all the one rule is you can't be human. And so it's all of these demi humans and you know undead mm-hmm. and you know that there's no humans. So it really leaves a lot up just up to the character design where it's like you know uh Cossetus, he looks like a huge like iron beetle like what is that <laughs> what is, what is he yeah looks super <laughs> dope um i i like this so far the first episode it got me enough it showed it introduced some really cool characters and with and it, it left a question too like where is it gonna go because at the end of episode one we see for now, even though I think to me Demiurge looks a little shady, I mm. think we should watch him. But for now, they are all pledging their loyalty to him. And now it's like, where do we go? Where does he go? Will he, you know, th- they all pleaded his loyalty, but then will he lose that at some point? Like, I'm so interested to see, like, oh, is somebody going to like start questioning him because he's a human or whatever and all this stuff. It it brings so much and it left me so much so that I wanted to keep going. And that's, I don't know if the show gets into that now, but it does start to bring up this question of like, since he's been like isekai or whatever, like it, is he now an undead? Like has he lost his humanity? And is that something that's going to start to develop as the series goes on? Yeah. Was there enough explanation on character types? They explained it a little bit. Um, they explained like what kind of magic some of them had. Mm-hmm. Like I know they explained the twins. They had um, certain magic that was helping them out in episode two. Um, some of these did, I think. But I, I'm pretty sure it's going to get into it. We. Uh... I know it like explains that Demiurge is like a defensive specialist. Um, so that's why he's <clears> on like the floor that requires the that has like the most accessibility to the rest of the dungeon. Yeah. It gives like these little these little again throwaway lines where it could be little uh, you know it, you could treat it as a throwaway line or you could you know use that to completely build it. out this character's uh you know their stat sheet if that's what you you're going to do i like sebus he's super cool i think mm-hmm. he's one of, i think he's my favorite right now he's pretty cool and he's you know he's like the he's the quintessential butler type he he yeah. does he won't leave your side and when you tell ask him to do something he'll do it and return without you even realizing that he was gone Yep. So that was episode one of Overlord. Episode two, what happens in Floor Guardians? Because we get a lot more Sebus uh, information. Looks like, Sebus looks like a human, so that makes me wonder what he is. All of the Sebus and all the mates kind of look humanish, but uh, yeah. that's you know neither here nor there. Anyways, episode two. He could turn into a demon. That's all. Well, yeah. I I Demi picture Urge him <laughs> just yeah something yeah he did he turned into like a demon frog toad thingy but like I'm pretty sure he'll just like bulk up or something <laughs> that'd be so dope. So episode two, what happens? Uh, episode two, floor guardians. Momonga addresses all of the guardians after they gather together. Uh, Sebus has discovered that the great tomb of Nazarick is no longer surrounded by swamps, but is now in the middle of uh, great grasslands. Momonga quickly puts together a plan to help shroud the tomb in a veil of secrecy, leaving the guardians to execute the plan. A scuffle happens between Albedo and Shaeltir over Momonga um, with Demiurge on the side, bringing up the concept of a possible heir for the great ruler. Momonga uh, Momonga thinks about his current condition. Uh, No longer able to feel tiredness or hunger, he leaves the tomb to get some air, followed by Demiurge. Uh, Walking out into the middle of the night and using an item to fly up into the sky, taking in the entire world before him, Momonga resolves that if any of his old guildmates have made it to this world, he will find them. Then spotting uh, Mare using his magic to hide the tomb, Momonga drops in and grants them a precious ring. Albedo also drops in and is granted a ring after Momonga <laughs> notices her noticing Mare's ring. <laughs> <laughs> the episode ends with a hint of a new threat on the horizon. 
you know, now that we're talking about it, now we're like reminiscing about the episodes I watched. I think I like it more. At the time, I didn't. I don't think I appreciated it what was happening. But in this episode, for the most part, we're learning about the Floor Guardians. We're learning about the relationships, and they are like building they're like a group characters. Of yeah, they're like a group of nine kids. You know what I mean, or whatever. Uh, hello, Dan. Hello, hello, everybody watching uh, on live uh, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jules the Human. We are uh, talking about Overlord. We're on talking about episode two right now. If you watched it, let us know. I want to know who watched it. I want to know if what your thoughts are. But in episode two, um, we get so much cool information. Like I like this stuff. I what was the anime? There was another anime before. Where I was like, I just want these characters to interact. I would watch uh, oh, uh, Zombie Land, Zombie Land, Cabinary. I want all of. I just want to watch them interact with each I think other. All of our S tier animes, except all of our shared S tier animes. Yeah, I just want to see them hang out, and I like this episode, episode two, because it was a lot of them character building. Um, it, they had some silliness in there when they were talking about the heirs. We had, yeah. I loved uh, uh, Cossetus going like, oh, you guys are arguing over a, a bunch of childish stuff. And then Demiurge is like, well, think about it. Like, wouldn't it be so great if Nazarick had like an heir for when our great ruler has to go someday? And he's like, oh yeah, that'd be so great. He'll call me uncle. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, he just walks off on the lines. He's just yeah. like thinking about it. He's like, oh, he could ride on my back and all this. Stuff. It's like, oh my God, that's so cool because he's such a big beetle guy and he uh -huh. has the, the, the heart, you know, the big softy. You know what I mean? Like I love them building the tropes and it's not overdone. It's like here we are here here we're building these characters out and it's so much fun to watch them hang out um also love the subtlety just and not you know bringing attention to it which i'm bringing attention to it ironically of mayor and uh mayor and aura aura being like they they cross dress which i just mm -hmm. thought is a really nice touch i watched I it previously it's such a good show it's pretty good we're starting it out yeah they said uh they were a Toko no Ko, uh, which is a male girl who has culturally feminine. Gen I forgot what it was. I, I wrote it down, but it's I didn't write it right. It, it's a it's a common thing, I guess, and that's the way the person that made them made them. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Um, it's a nice way to just have a more rounded out cast. I just really yeah. like it. Yeah, for sure. They had they had a lot of funny moments. The the thing where you know, uh, Mamongo gave the ring and then Albedo like sees it and he sees that she sees it, but then she doesn't mention it. Yeah. And it's like, she like breaks for like a quarter of a second. And he's like, yeah. oh, what was that? <laughs> we get this screen right there. And it's like, oh, he's like, whoa. And then he's like, are you okay? She's like, yeah, I'm fine. Well, uh, here's a ring. Here you go. Here you go. Whatever. So we, we get some fun. We get some fun in this one. And, um, it doesn't get like as an episode two, this is good because now we're rounding out the cast and we have enough, again, enough information to build on yeah. whenever we see them in the future. Whenever we see the characters in the future, we know how they're going to act. We know, we don't know their powers yet. We don't know a whole lot about their powers, but we know enough about their personality mm -hmm. that they are for sure putting the lord mamunga um, above everybody else the person that i was super suspicious of who looks the most suspicious mm -hmm. demiurge he's the one that brings up i would love an heir I mm -hmm. he has to breed an heir because that's why um albedo and shaltir were fighting because they both are in love with mamunga and shaltir again <laughs> this is kind of what <laughs> written by a guy yeah, the, the whole guy. shouts your thing again is it was almost too much because she was yeah. like, "There's something happening in my pants when he's talking." Or whatever. I'm like, oh, "Man, of course it's gonna be a <laughs> what if it comes in, becomes into like a harem anime where he just has all of the <laughs> all of the girls." Um, but it's just enough, I guess. Um, I'm but, glad it, it's it's like it's very it's a very concentrated dose when it happens and then sure. it just leaves it out. It sure. just doesn't do anything else with it. Because um, after the first episode, I see Albedo so cool in all yeah. the other episodes. Episode Take two, that, episode three, four. That first interaction away. And I love Albedo. Just, as a nothing character. changes. Nothing changes. And that's when you know it probably just shouldn't be there. 
Yeah. <laughs> or somebody they watched it in the edit and they were like, can we put something a little bit more there or whatever? Yeah, that's probably what happened. Um, <laughs> but I love this. I love that he's there for three days mm-hmm. as we see him. And he's, like you said, we don't know if he's going to become an undead because he said at the beginning, he said he still has some of his feelings. He still sat, had some of his libido and albedo was doing that in the first episode. But after the three days, he doesn't feel as much. And it's like, oh, that's like the underlying thing. Like, will he eventually turn into the thing that will rule this world? You know what I mean? I think that's a a, a severe threat. Will good intentions turn sour? Because he has good intentions. It seems. Yeah, so far, up until episode four, I was like super on board with him trying to find his friends, trying to do all this stuff. But we also get information as well that this, the, where he ruled got isekai somewhere else. Yeah. The, it wasn't in the swamp. The, the tomb of Nazareth is no longer surrounded by the swamplands. We are now surrounded by like grasslands. So what do you and think that is? That's, what do you that's think where, that? that's where I think that the, I, I don't know how I don't have explanation. But what I think happened is when the game server closed, um, somehow this the tomb of Nazareth was like just literally like imagine like a copy or a cut and paste into some other world where all of the rules and all of like a lot of the uh, I guess the world building of Idris still happened, but sure, like 2000 years of empires rising and falling has also happened, so it's just like this totally different world this different part of history but same world almost maybe that's what i'm trying to say okay i think of it more as huh yeah yeah si- very similar to what i think i think this is just a a different game maybe i first thought it would be the real world but then later on in episode 3 we see that they're using magic too like the the npcs are using magic mm-hmm. so i was like yo what if that would have been crazy if he got isekai into the real world and he's killing real humans, I would be like, wait, what? That would blow my mind, but the everybody else is using magic, so I'm like, yeah. it's a video game. Um, I think it's more like somebody used the assets of Unreal Engine 5 and then put it into their game. It's like I took some, some Fortnite assets, but I took this castle with me. Yes. Or something like that. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. And so, then, I, so now he's been, he's been isekai'd in as the big because he was still in the game when the game ended they took his tomb which was like the big bad because he's the max level guy with he put all this time into the game and there's all of these guardians and all of these non-human creatures here so what if i just take this super high level tomb from the game and put it into my new game and he's the big bad or he's He's a bad bad guy maybe whoa that's 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 kind of like the cut and paste yes sure unreal asset we got there but that's a better explanation of what my brain's thinking is happening sure we don't know we haven't seen it we've only seen up to episode four so we are gonna go through it we go through four episodes today another four next week and then five on the other week so we're gonna watch through the whole first season here episode three battle of carne village this is where it heats up yeah where the action excuse me comes flying so what happens in episode three Episode 3. The episode starts with a group of human soldiers we've not seen before. They've been tasked by their king to rout a group that has been attacking villages in their kingdom. The head warrior is out on a mission uh, with a small group, and the second-in-command thinks that it is some kind of a trap to corner the head warrior. Back in the tomb, I'm going to start calling Momonga Momo. By the way, I'm just going to call him Momo for now. Momo Momo. is being assisted by Sebus in using a remote viewing mirror. Seeing a town of innocent villagers being slaughtered by knights clad in armor, Momo decides to help only after he remembers of a time when someone rescued him. Also believing this to be a chance to test his strength, he calls for Albedo to get battle ready. Portaling into the scene, Momo rescues two human kids from knights using his high-tier magic, then raising a dark knight that runs off to attack the rest of the human knights in town. The kids 
frightened by Momo offering a healing potion. Um, Albedo would then also raise her axe in disgust of the kids. Momo reassures Albedo that it's fine and reassures the kids the potion will help. The Dark Knight is unable to be damaged by the would-be knights, and they retreat, their will to fight shattered. Momo gives them a name to carry back to their superiors, however. Ains Ul Gown. Gown? 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 Gown. Momo, identity shrouded behind a mask, asks the villagers for money in exchange for their rescue to put them at ease. But what he really wants is information, and uses this exchange as a forum to ask questions about this world. We learn about the Three Kingdoms, Riestes, Baharuth, and the slain Theocracy. Based on the crests on the shields, the attack was from the Baharuth Empire, but it also could have been a stage by the slain Theocracy. Friendly Face rides into town, chief royal warrior of Riestes' kingdom, Gazef Stronoff. That's a mouthful. Don't say it three times fast. <laughs> he arrives and introductions are made, but short-lived as the arriving knights realize they have been surrounded by the slain theocracy. This word kicks in, and I love the pacing on this so far because we get one episode explaining what's going on. We get episode one, whatever. Here we are into this world. And episode two, building out the characters, building out the the classic group, <clears throat> showcasing some power, showcasing how they <clears throat> how they view Lord Momo. And now episode three is like, okay, here's the story. Here we go. We're expanding out. Here's a story to kind of latch on to. We get introduced to these characters. We get introduced to Gazif. Gazif Stronoff, who is super dope. I was like, yo, this guy's cool. His uh, um, his whole speech in the first part of the episode, loved it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm instantly on his side. You, like, you get him. You know who he yeah. is. You know where I'm he's like, been, and you know what he's going to do. I'm like, this is dope. Whatever. This is so cool. So I like that they're building something. He's looking, as so far, he's looking for people, other people, or whatever. And then he decides... Again, the humanity of him decides to help the innocent because, and I love the way that they did the flashback. Mm-hmm. This was so cool. They did a flashback of what would Lord Touch Me Son do? The, the name, just yeah. in that name, they, they get it. Yeah. That's a gamer it, tag. That's a gamer tag. <laughs> Lord Touch Me, but he was the valiant white knight that would save everybody. <laughs> it's so good. It's classic. Um, so they show uh, a flashback of when he got saved and and emoted on. <laughs> he got what, <laughs> he got L danced on, man. <laughs> so um, and I love that like this interaction might have been what you know what essentially started uh, Ains Ul Gown. Yeah. Unless um, it was Touch Me Son that was in that guild already and then invited Momo. but I think that was it. Okay. I think because there was other people around, I think that Lord Touch Me was the one that brought him into the guild and was like, here, come on. This is, come on, young Padawan. You're level 15. <laughs> Get over here and let's uh, join our guild and we'll help you out. I think that was more of what it was. But like... I want more of that stuff. I want more of him remembering the good times with his gamer tag, gamer friends. Uh, and I'm like, yes. What did he learn in this game? I wanted that until the end of episode four. And then I'm like, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> okay. And we'll get, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. I don't remember. I did like it. I like it here for where, where the story's going with it. Yeah. It was it spoiler, non-spoiler. Uh, he burned down like each of their flags. He was just like, burn and each of their flags burned down and basically said i'm i'm taking the name so where he's going with that we'll see okay i well then why wouldn't you want to see more of his friends at the end he, he burned their flags down yeah but i don't know okay <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i don't know i don't know what that meant but well we can give our uh opinions uh, yeah, when we get to episode exactly. four but i just open the gun sure so he's giving the first thing I thought of when he started giving 
the magic potion of these these two humans. I was mm-hmm. like, he's giving away too many items. And one one thought that I went to that went to my head was that he's giving away all his items, and now we're gonna see NPCs have magic items for the first time, and it's gonna go bad. I think that's gonna be some little storyline later on where he gave something to somebody and it was too powerful and they got crazy with it so like him just giving magic items to everybody him giving the thing to albedo could be bad him giving something to somebody else could be bad we'll see if that comes up later but so far i was like this guy's doing too much i, I would not be going to be <laughs> non-consequential until he said demiurge I'll, cra- I'll see that you have one crafted for yourself too and then i was like oh he's only got so many Maybe you shouldn't be giving them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or does he not trust Demiurge? He could be like, oh, I'll, I'll give you one later. Yeah, sure. Possibly. I'll give you one later. Demiurge said something uh, that I forgot to comment on when he was like, uh, I believe the this world shines so that my master can adorn himself with rich with its riches. Yeah. And that made me like think that he's on his side, but I don't know. He's it just it's just his character design, I think. He looks he, he just looks like a sly, a sly cat. That's what I'm saying. I'm just like, I don't know if I trust he looks his like words. a wolf of Wall Street. He's guy. saying all the right words. Exactly. But they're too right. Where he's like, I wanna be, but that's how everybody is. So I don't know. Um, we see him flexing his magic in this one. Bro, he grass makes heart. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> he makes like what it what is it called? A death knight? Yeah. He makes a death knight. He's like, just go kill everybody in, in armor. And it goes to town. And it's like, these are one HP people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, one of one of the warriors even like notices that it's only attacking everybody that's running away because it's entertaining itself. It's not attacking anybody that's like standing their ground. <laughs> we haven't discussed this either, but NPCs and characters having free will or thoughts. What is that? NPCs? <laughs> this is, well, in, I mean, anybody but Lord Mamunga. Yeah. They have thoughts and they have feelings. All the guardians. Yeah. Emotion. Everybody else. Yeah. What is that? That's not that's, a game. That's that's is, that's isekai. That's the part of the isekai. I I thought. I know, but like, will they dive into it? I think because I'm, I really liked Log Horizon, and they dive into the little things. Um, <laughs> Bubsy said an NPC with free will is no longer an NPC, right? See, well, I yeah. don't know. You know, because they're <laughs> so at this point they're not NPCs. Those are villagers. Those are knights those are his guardians but they're not npcs at this point from what i understand log horizons too goaded exactly because Mom- even momonga makes all of these observations like um oh that smells so good wait idrisil doesn't have smell mm-hmm. oh this is happening wait idrisil doesn't have this but also oh this is just like an idrisil oh this is just like an idrisil so there's so- some like there's some merge points that's going on of between like reality and the game or something along those lines. That's what has me questioning. Like in the back of my mind, I'm just like, what are they? What is happening? Because it's, it's growing concerning for me because I'm like, everybody is acting on their own. Um, we meet this, this really cool character Gazov, and he has his own thing. And we see other characters that are stated in their in ways like yeah. There's and emotion we see, and stuff. And we see the villagers give Mamunga all this information about how the village. So the village and Nazarick are part of the Riestes kingdom, and adjacent to the great mountain range that runs north and south is the Baharuth <laughs> Empire. Those are like <laughs> north uh like a northwest and a northeast territory and then south of bo- both of them is the slain theocracy um and baharuth and riestes are always on bad terms with each other and often battle on the plains that border the two countries near the capital of riestes which is erantel mm-hmm. so we get that whole like quip of info and momonga doesn't know about any of that so this is the history of a completely different world or 
of again like uh, a history of empires have fallen and new ones have risen and now this is what's going on this is the mm -hmm. status quo there's something going on where where whatever was going on in idrasil and the power struggle that was happening there that's no longer the case and mm -hmm. he's trying to get as much information as he can in this episode to understand hey who's who's the threat am i the strongest guy here or is mm -hmm. there i have to keep acting as though there's somebody stronger out there yeah um and then in episode four it just goes out the window because yeah. we get some crazy stuff going on so what happens in episode four uh episode ruler of four, death i don't have a lot written for this one honestly. okay that's fine um, but pre-opening we are introduced to the to the threat in proper uh nijun grid lewin of the sunwit scripture who gets sent on a mission to eliminate gazef stronoff cutting back to the village gazef tells uh momo that the attackers of carne village were slain theocracy soldiers dressed as people from the baharuth empire Gazef manages to get Momo to promise and protect to promise to protect the village, allowing him to go on and fight without worrying about the village. Momo gifts Gazef a small gift that he takes with him in battle. Gazef and his unit charge the enemy, managing to pull off an impressive feat of battle, slaying many angels. However, the slain magicians have too much power to pull from, and at the moment of his defeat, defeat, Gazef is saved. Using the gift from before, Momo tags himself in and starts to showcase the true peak power level in this world, dropping all of the slain angels and handling their trump card with ease. Momonga sends the theocratics packing. Momonga would return to the tomb, spirits high, calling all in the tomb to the throne room. Momonga announces that he is changing his name to Ains Owl Gown, Ains Owl Gown, and that he will be referred to as Ains henceforth. Ains has now decided that he will bring the name of his old guild to each corner of the of this world in an attempt to find any other members that may have been brought here. Ooh, this got me hyped. This was so cool. Um <clears throat> again he gives away one of his magic items and i thought he was just being dumb i was like oh my god what happened but then we figure out that he was actually helping out gazif um later on for that i battle. i was like it's one of two things it's some sort of a teleportation stone or it's a resurrection stone sure that also gives a buff i was like it's going to be one of those two things <laughs> yeah what um what do you how do you explain gazif um, I love Gazif. He's so cool. He's fighting with everything, so much resolve, and he wanted his he wanted his people to distract everybody. He was gonna take all the angels off on his own, and which would eventually probably kill him, but he was like ready to do that. And mm -hmm. at an instant, he was like, Great, cool, he's gonna save his people. But like, how do you explain him having these sick attacks? Is it just him being part uh, of like it's... martial art? It's it's probably like the same. I feel like uh, him saying martial art yeah. is in reference to probably like some sort of ability tree reference of Yidrasil, where sure. all of the martial people, because there are tons of marshals in uh, Yidrasil, we get to mm -hmm. kind of see a little bit of that. Um, they probably, instead of casting magic skills or magic spells, they cast martial arts. Mm -hmm. which is probably what they do so, so this it was is probably learned. yeah probably it learned was a learned ability yeah okay you yeah, have to go that's... to your class uh your class trainer and spend you know this much gill in order to that... sure that's what i was gonna say like that's what i thought too was that he was gonna that he spent so much time learning and growing his craft and that shows how much more than the the average person he's been training and yeah. that's that's how much cooler he is because he spent so much time and now he knows these martial arts that are almost magic are, are special abilities that no regular human should because at first i thought i was like is we don't he see human? any of his soldiers doing it for sure yeah, that, yeah that's what i first thought i was like is he a human person in a game but he was so low level but he knows these powers i was like is he but then I was like, no, he's probably it's probably just showcasing that 
this character is a higher character. Exactly. Because even when you play Final Fantasy fourteen, you have NPCs that can do really high level magic if you get far enough. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably what it is. But they would still die super quick, and they're not manned by a human. And you even have that moment of uh, all of the slain magicians like uh, panicking, and you just hear them cast every cantrip and first level spell in the in the spell book you know what i mean yeah acid splash fire bolt ice ice ray they're they're doing yeah. everything and they're like these know, are my strongest power yeah. <laughs> and he's like they're, they're throwing one. everything yeah adam and it's it's not even scratching him and it's not until the trump trump card the trumpiest trump card comes out where it's like you know they they summon some huge angel that was gifted to him from the person that gave him this mission in the first place to only use if need be they mm -hmm. pull out the trump card and uh ains is like oh this is what it feels like to take damage yeah which was baller that which was, was so insane cool. dude yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you, Bubsy, for the 500 bits. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. We got added to the, to the, uh, what is it called? The chest, the chest. of anime, Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash. So we'll add that. Matt will add that to the chest. Thank you for the 500 bits. That goes to me and Matt. If you'd like to add an anime to the list of anime, uh, you can do so on the Twitch lives while we're live. 500 bits gets an anime added to the chest of anime, and we draw one out whenever we're done with an anime. We can go on another adventure. You see, we already drew Overlord. We're going to pick from these next time once we're done with Overlord. So uh, we'll add Bubsy's uh, pick to the list. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. How cool was this moment? It was so yeah. dope. Um, this is what it likes. To, well, this is what it feels like to take damage. I thought he was so dope, but it also showcases um, one because he was so smitten with it. Is he possibly turning? Has is he possibly turning into not human? Because he was mm -hmm. saying as well in this episode, he's like, "I was killing humans and I didn't, I didn't feel, feel nothing." Yep. He, the moments he had with uh, Albedo was so dope the moments that he had her and she was worried about him, but she had the armor on and she looked so cool. Mm -hmm. Like, but I also really like the moments where she's acting kind of like with, a. Uh, she acts as though the humans are lower life forms. And then he like checks her on it. He's like, do you actually, do you actually believe that? Cause that's something you actually believe. Like, I, I, I just like to see him engage her with this idea of humans being less than them. And I think that's going to come up later that he they show this now so that later on he's going to be like, these are just humans. We're going to and we're going to see the change, I think. And I'm that's what I'm so excited about for this anime because they're setting so much up. And I think I have too high expectations, but I believe that it they're going to hit those. So many different places. Yeah. I believe that he's going to turn at some point and have to look at himself and be like, oh, no. Or like one of his guildmates is going to come back and they're like, you're a completely changed person. What's going on? There's so many different things. And I'm so excited for this anime because it, it's so cool. Like there's so many, like you said, different ways you can go about it. Um, Dan asked, have you all done Hell's Paradise yet? We have not. Is it done with the first season? I wasn't sure if it was done with the first season yet. Um, if it's done, I'm down. Um, but yeah, you definitely get that in the moment when he, ra uh, Albedo raises her axe at like two kids just for like kind of, you know, being scared of a potion that looked like blood in a vial to, mm -hmm. you know, an untrained eye until he explains, oh, this is a magic potion because I'm a magic caster, just like that person that, you yeah. know, that comes into town sometimes. Yeah, like that's there. Don't worry. This is here to help you. And she she was ready to like chop them down for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two little kids. Dan and Bubsy says it's all out. How many episodes? I mean, I've heard great things about Hell's Paradise and Hell's Paradise anime or manga. Uh, someone wants to add it. That's cool. Um, we see so many, so many cool bits. This is how do you, as a showcase of action this is like our first big action sequence yeah how do you rate this first like action sequence here it's it's not even the action itself that really got me going what got me more honestly is just the context around the action all of the i was listening to that whole conversation you mm -hmm. were having 
how could you even talk about slaughtering the villagers that I just went out of my way to save? Yeah. Like all of that, all of his just the 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 back and forth <laughs> so between good. them bet- between all the attacks is what uh, what got me going more than um the you know all the action itself. Mm-hmm. It was the words that were going being thrown back and forth and then finally mm-hmm. culminating in this shot with Mr. Lewig, just or whatever his name was, uh, just just you know, staring at the face of death incarnate. Literally, it's so him. good. He's not, he he believed he held the power of gods in that item that he pulled out, and he watched as somebody single handedly trounced that power. And it was and the way that it did it. it. Yeah, it was just like a little 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 ball. It black was hole. like little black hole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But to them, they Done. were just like, what? Yeah. What is this? So crazy. Um, Bubsy said, I have a feeling you guys will like Grimgar, by the way. Okay, we'll check it out afterwards. I haven't heard of it, so I'm going to look it up after this. Never heard of it. I don't read the light, night, light novel so bad of Hell's Paradise. Yeah, it's been recommended so many times. I'm, I don't know. It's a cool concept, I think. I'm down to watch Hell's Paradise. Um, <clears throat> so him renaming himself... Him taking down all of his clan mates, um, their banners, banners. Him renaming himself Ein Zalgon. Um, to, in does it make sense for him to change his name, to name himself as the clan, so that he can spread the name around? And if somebody her, hears of it, if somebody from his clan hears of it, they're like, "Wait, somebody." from my clan no, is here because that's a really like wild it does, name it does make sense in in that context to me but then add a little stipulation of but with what the show has given us in regards to rules of the isekai do i even believe that his guild members would be there no they would have been in the guild hall with him when the game ended, why would they mm. have been doing anything else? Why, if the if the rule of the isekai was you needed to be logged on to the game at midnight to get put into this new world or whatever, we again we don't know. We, it doesn't explain it. But with me trying to think about that, it's like where's where's that gonna go? How did anybody else get put into this world then if they weren't playing the game? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, don't I don't know. So we're on episode four. We don't yeah. know what's gonna happen. What's your hope, or if you were to write, if someone gave you these first four episodes and they were like, write 10 more episodes or whatever, ten write nine more episodes of this anime, where would the story go if you were in charge? I mean, What's yeah, by, most interesting? By episode 10, there would be something going on in terms of like r- the kingdom of Reestes. He's done something in order to get into his good graces, but then there's some sort of there's some sort of complication or decision that comes along along the way where he has to make a choice between the greater good of Nazareth or the greater good of uh the world or something. And I think we know which one he would choose mm-hmm. at that point in the show if he continues to again this idea that we're throwing around of he's uh he's starting to become an undead or he's starting to lose his humanity, whichever way you want to go with it. I think that's the most interesting for sure. The most interesting the most part interesting way to go for is it, yeah. the character development of him. And because he's him... already started at level 100, it's not like he can get more stronger. Yeah, more we already stronger. have. You, have... you also have all of the guardians talking about how nice and kind and good he is right off the bat. So I don't know. It's just like, you know, it could be that whole how, oh, how far we've come. Oh, how the, how the great have fallen. Like, yeah, type story. I want him to be defeated. I I think something that would be crazy would be like you said. Since you said it, I, I it's in my head now that he's the ultimate bad guy, and then somebody else comes along. It doesn't have to be his guildmate. It could be somebody random or whatever. Or or him getting Isakai into a new game. There's a new high level. There's another extent to level 100 there's level 150 or whatever and there's another person that's like hey i'm gonna kill you and now he's like wait i'm a human and they're like what you're not a human you're a bad guy and it it, i think he can be defeated and i want to see him go through that 
And I think that would be crazy to tell if, if that's the story. Um, Dan, uh, average sport, thank you for the 500 bits. Hell's Paradise, baby. Woo! Nice. Hell's Paradise being added to the anime list. Thank you so much. We appreciate Thanks it. That for goes the 500 bitties. Yeah, that goes to me and Matt. Uh, thank you so much, Bubsy and Dan. Appreciate it. Um, either way, whatever, however it ends up, there's so much hope for this anime. There's so much hope that I have for the story. Um, and I'm excited. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, at first, we were a little let down because I thought it was gonna be he was gonna be like a real undead guy. We we're gonna follow the story of an undead guy. Oh, and really? I was like, and I was like, oh, it's an isekai. Yep. <laughs> at first, I was like, oh no, not another isekai. But then it it has fleshed out for me, and it has um, been interesting. Yeah. Uh, so far, the setup is great. We've gotten a great serve. We just need some a good follow-through and then the show to stick the landing and this will be a great first first season and if it is i can definitely see myself continuing to watch this show past the first season because from what like i understand there's uh yeah there's a couple seasons yeah but um i've seen greater setups and harder fumbles sure <laughs> we've been through that here on the show for sure um so thank you so much for watching our uh talk our anime hour of overlord episode one through four if you'd like to continue uh with this conversation you can watch episode five through eight by next week hopefully by thursday or friday we've been doing it on fridays but thursday or friday episode five through eight to watch overlord episode five through eight and we'll come back here and we'll discuss it and we'd love to know your opinions thank you so much to bubsy for the 500 bits and uh dan thank you for the 500 bits as well we'll add those two anime to the chest here's the chest here's what it looks like we're gonna add two more to the list this is what we've ranked so far s tiers a lot of s tiers so far a's b's some d's and some s on the left is me on the right is matt that's where that's what we've watched so far uh, we'll put it in the Discord. We have a thing in the Discord where there's an anime hour chat. If you want to go check that out. And it has these two pictures. So you can see what's coming up. And you can see uh, where we've rated the things already. But oh, yeah. Matt, where can they find you on the internet? When I'm not here talking about anime, you can find me on my Twitch at matt underscore galley or on my socials at its matt underscore galley just put that its at the front um we've also been trying to like play some games and stuff in the discord we've been playing board games on tabletop simulator um come join us for games where can the people yeah. find you when we're not here um at jules human on the internet on youtube.com slash jules the human if you missed any of this uh, anime hour you can go and watch the full episodes the next day on youtube.com slash jules the human j-u-l-e-s the human as it says right here um and you can watch on spotify you can watch the podcast on spotify in case you want to go back and watch any other ones you can go back and see all the anime hours that we've done on Spotify. Not just listen, you can also watch. Hello, Faith. How's it going? Um, and we are done for the anime hour. Remember, next week, over Overlord. I keep wanting to say Overwatch. Overlord, episode five Indeed. through eight. Go, <laughs> go join the Discord. Follow us on all the things. Follow Matt. Um, and we'll talk about Overlord five through eight next week. Thank you so much. See you. Bye. Bye.